Hello, everyone. This is Sunny Harris, and I'm going to analyze your charts today with this Sunny Bands indicator, which is, you can see there are two channels, one inner and one outer channel. And in the center, you can see a gold line and a purple line and a little black one in between. The gold and purple are my dynamic moving average, which I call my DMA. So the DMA is different from any other moving average you'll ever see. Uh, you, you'll notice that it doesn't flip back and forth in congestion areas. You see how purple stayed on top that whole way? While purple's on top, I do shorts. So over here, gold goes on top and we do long. Uh, if it's if the DMA is flat, which you can see right across here, that means that we're in congestion. And hang on. The time is 12 o'clock p.m. It's flat, so that means that the moves are not going to go very far beyond the DMA because it usually goes up and then right back down or down and then right back up when it does those congestion kind of things. Uh, let me see where the chat went. Does anybody have any questions up to this point? Because I'm going to be using this to do your stocks. No, no questions. Okay, so we will go on. Uh, this is what I look at to analyze stocks. I've got the sunny bands, which you just saw around price and look how nicely it calls the turning points long short long to the dma short long to the dma long again this time so it doesn't give me predictions except that i do know from using this thing so many years i've been trading for 43 years and uh, i developed my dma and sunny bands three it took me three years to do it three years into my trading, I had the dynamic moving average. So what's that like 37 or 38 years? I don't know, that's, I've been using it a long time. <laughs> the vertical lines you see on the bottom, uh, well in the middle of the chart, they go gold and red or purple and green. If gold is showing, that means that the gold line on the DMA is on top, which makes me bullish. When it turns red, it's still saying that the gold line is on top. But this histogram measures the difference between the gold and purple lines. So you can see it's a really little number. And when they go red, it's it's a warning to me that I should be looking for the possibility of shorts. So right in there, that's a, that's a good warning. When purple goes down below the zero line, that tells me purple's on top, I'm looking for shorts. And when it every time it turns green back and forth across here, it's telling me that the signal's getting weak. And the shorter they get, the more likely they are to cross over the zero line and go long again. Uh, the indicator I have here at the bottom is my slope indicator, so I can tell how many degrees things are moving at. Flat to me is any angle between plus five and minus five. Excuse me. I had to have a little bit of tea. The dots on the bottom are gold and purple. When the DMA is flat, it prints light gold. And when the purple DMA, here's a, a lavender, light purple, that tells me the DMA is flat. So I've got a couple flat DMAs there. All right, let's take some symbols. Your symbols now. Okay, Amazon. Where is it? A M. Let's just type it. A M Z M. All right. Oh, that's a weekly chart. I like to look at daily charts. All right. So we've got a turn right here on current price let's magnify it and see what that looks like close up all right so we had a 
bearish turn up here. If I were going to take that short signal, I would only do it down to the D flat DMA. Yes, it goes further. That's okay. I got some profit out of it. Then we have a green bar that breaks above the inner band or the up lower outer band. And then a green candle that comes up and is trying now to get above the DMA. If that thing gets above the DMA tomorrow, I'd be a buyer again. Uh, do I have any clue? Come on. Now my controls have gone. All right. Let's try it this way. Here we go. Okay, we tighten these back up. Pull them out to the right. So we've got a buying opportunity for a run to um, 155.66. And we're right now at 148.92. So we've got almost 20 points there from here to here. Um, let's see. Amazon Abbey. Well, that's a wild stock. Prices, you talk about penny stocks, this doesn't even cost a penny. Uh, looks to me like a short move is in progress. Um, on the slope on this one, you can see that it's turned, it turned from red to green and red to green and now red again. So this thing is trying to go down. And we've got light purple all the way along here because that's flat <laughs> because this thing is, doesn't even cost a penny. All right, what else do we have? Zion. This is Zion. We've got a high recent. That's, I don't know that that's the all time high, but there's a, certainly a high there at. Oh, what is it? Where the yellow dot is. 5524. I think that's what it says. 5524. Yeah. So we've got that. And we are currently at. 4494. So that's 11 points from here to here which I think it can make that. I think the market's going to be going up for a little while here. Once it figures out that it, it uh, is not going to turn off. I have a long-term chart that I use that uh, gives me monthly charts in, in percentage movements instead of with price. And it shows that we're right now touching uh, and I call these things attractors, support and resistance, moving averages, uh, Fibonacci retracements, all those are attractors. Price is attracted to them. So I look at that and see that it's got one above. That's plenty of room. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, ABBV. That's maybe what he meant to type the first time. He or she. Yeah. Okay, so on um, ABBV, we've got a yellow dot out here at the left at 166.28. We're currently at 160. We've got six points on the upside for this one, I, in my opinion. When will it happen? I don't know. I don't have uh, Robert Miner's software to work with. Oh, I see. C M C S A. I don't even know what that is. See if you could type me the name of that stock. I can't read through the writing. But here we have a, a high. 
back at 47.70. We hit a strong low down here at 38.08. And now we're moving up in a very choppy fashion. One, two, three, four, five. A. So if the A stops right there, we'll have a B wave back up and then a C on down. This low down here that we had uh, in October could be met again. But it can't go below that line or I don't have the Elliott wave count correct. Okay. Horizon. Mm, that one's on up. Let's see if we can squeeze that a little bit. Oh, it's got a long, a long term high way back here. So it could go to 52 and change. We're currently at 38 something. So we've been down, 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 down. Let's look at this on a weekly basis. See what it looks like. Uh, it's going to take it some time to get up to that 200 moving average. It's going to have to chop back and forth on the way to get there. But that's where I think we're ultimately going, as long as the company stays st itself stays strong. Uh, Comcast. Oh, the CMCSA is Comcast. Thank you. T. Let's look at T. Hello. Oops, I got too many characters Telephone. I'm going to draw the tractor in this time. So all those local highs right there is probably where we're going. And it will chop back and forth, but it's above the 200 now. So that's very positive. Uh, it'll often come back to test it. But gold is on top. The slope of this dynamic moving average is up. And I think it's one, two, three, four. I think it'll go up to, and there's another attractor. Right down through there. Ah, it has, see all these points of inflection around that line right there and then back over here as well. So that's why I drew that there is because uh, I like to look at the abundance of prices hitting that area. So that's right where we are. It's just barely above where we are. It's going to have to break through that. And that's at 15, 1766. So it's going to have to break through that in order to go on up. I would be at, I like price to prove itself. So I would buy a, be a buyer above that. A couple of ticks above that. Okay. Any more symbols? Any questions of any kind? Oh, oh he wants to see that. Oh, Casey. Hi, Casey. He has five minutes. All right, let's go. <sighs> five minutes. And this is what I trade. I had I do have, I don't know, 12 or so stocks in my portfolio, but um I trade those on daily charts and I trade the e-mini every day on a five minute chart. So here we've got a 200 moving average running all the way through those prices, nothing happening there. And then this morning it broke out to the upside. Right now, it has one little red candle that's come down and looks like it's almost touched. Did it touch? It's almost touched the DMA. And I believe that, what time? I believe that still today, we'll take a bounce up off that DMA. See how it's flat right there at the tip? So I think we'll bounce back up to the upper outer band before the day is over. Thank you, Casey. Let's take this back to Haley. In eBay.
Uh -huh. We've got a, here's a, a trend line used as an attractor. It's kind of more a least squares trend line than just a straight line. But you can see that across that trend line, price has hit the trend line now. Uh, it might dip a little bit below that and then go on up, but it'll at least make it to the upper outer band. If we have we have an attractor here at 44.96, and that's probably where it's going. QQQ. No, the yellow dots are not buy signals. I'll explain them in just a minute, but they're not buy signals or sell signals. They're just illustrating the perfect turning points on that chart. So they come in after the fact, but uh, for 43 years, I've been printing out my charts every, every night after the market. And I look for these yellow dots to tell me where I should have traded. And I look at where I actually did trade. And then I either do a little cheer or I am disappointed, one or the other. The goal is to stay where the yellow dots are. That's my PHW indicator. Did I put QQQ? I put the letters in and didn't press enter. Why is this not coming up? QQQ, enter. And it's, it says QQQ, there it is. I thought that's a Google. All right, QQQ. Let's spread them out a little bit here. It's trying, well, it has closed right above the flat DMA here on this one. Um, we might stumble a little bit more. That's one, two, three, four, five bars on the flat DMA. So it very well could make it above this in the next couple of days and go on up to the upper outer band at 412.39. What are we looking at now? 404 to 412, that's eight points. But this is this is how I swing trade. I swing on daily charts and you know I'll ride them a day or two to a month or two. And to me, that's very long term. When you trade on five minute charts every day, that's a long term. AMD. Mm -hmm. That's configuration that I expect to go on the chart we just looked at with this green candle going up like that. I expect that on that other chart. Fans micro devices is bullish to me. That green candle closing all the way above the DMA where the gold is still on top is very bullish. And of course, we're probably going to test this little yellow dot right there at 151.11. I'm going to draw a little. So right there where is where I think we're going to go. Got a lot of up stocks these days. A lot of good ones. Anybody else have something? Let's look at this one. See what bonds are doing today. Yep, they've been going up, 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 up. Interest rates coming down. Now price is going down. And I think that if, if anybody read the sunny side of the street from Sunday night, uh, and if you want sunny side of the street, text me or uh, chat me your name and email and I'll put you on the list. Um. So we've got a flat DMA, gold is on top. Look down here at the slopes. See, it shows yellow, meaning that's flat. The histogram has red bars primarily coming down. It looks like it's going to go below there. It'd have to be really strong to go back up from that level. But uh, this will put the purple on top and it will go on down. And let's see, 21 is above the 200. So we have a death cross. And the 55's down here, and I'm, oh, there's another attractor. I'm thinking that's where we're going to go. See so how this 
congestion right through here. That's the confluence of price right there. So we could go, it's probably not going to go all the way down to this level, though it might. It's probably going to test this 55 at 118 in 730 seconds. Hmm. Anybody else have a, a stop or a question or anything? You want to know how to pro program easy language? Should I give easy language lessons now? Oh, let's see. Would I explain a bit the slope indicator? You bet. What angles do we need to look for some confirmation? All right. The slope indicator measures this DMA, the slope of the DMA, three bars. So it's just looking right here at three, three bars to see. You see that? It's just looking at those three bars to get the slope. And so the slope is down of those three bars. So it's looking only at the DMA. Not the slope of price, but the slope of the DMA itself. Uh, the angles we have to worry about are, for slope, it needs to be above 5 degrees to be a, be a positive slope, and less than minus 5 degrees to be a negative slope. Did that get it? Well, I don't have very much to say if you don't have sure. Let's look at Bitcoin for a second. I watch the price activity on Bitcoin, but I trade Ethereum. So I do have some cryptocurrencies. I also trade gold, but not on these charts. I mean, I look at the charts to make my decisions, but I I uh, buy and sell the coins themselves. This one's going up, that's for sure. Look at that. It's up to 47,682. I do think, and I mean, you know, it, it sounds like a far-fetched plan of mice and men, but I do think we'll make it back up to this level right here, which is, 63714. Somebody write that down. So I think that's where we're going to head up to. We've got a one, two, three wave should go up to about here. And then we get a little four that comes back down. And then the fifth could go up to this near, very near this level. Did I do USO already? No. USO. Let's go back to, well, this is okay. On the monthly chart, this is just flat, 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 flat. But let's put a, an attractor on at this yellow dot. And we we could make it up to that level, which is 128.76. But it doesn't look likely. I mean, the the, the uh, configuration of this chart just looks like sideways to down on a monthly basis. But let's look on the daily charts. So we've got a flat DMA. We've got price coming up and hitting the DMA. Purple's on top. Price falling down to the uh, lower outer band and then bouncing back up to the DMA with purple still on top. I think we're going down some more. Not real sure of that, but that's what, I, what I'm thinking. Uh, Ten-year treasury. Okay. Price is coming down on this chart on the daily. It gave the signal right there and the confirmation, the next bar to go short, but gold was on top. So that would say to me, don't take that trade. And yet I've got on the histogram red bars starting there. So I would measure the dif difference between the upper outer band and the DMA, which is like, uh, let's see, 11301, 
down to 1203. So there's one point there. If it's worth $31.25, then you can short that for one point. Actually, I don't know that. That's the bonds conversion. I don't, what's the tip? Which, what's the uh, uh, symbol for the? I'd have to look up the value for the big point. What's, does anybody know the big point value for the treasuries? 10 or, I don't know. What is DMA? That stands for dynamic moving average. It's the purple and gold lines that go through the center of this channel. Purple and gold lines are dynamic moving average. The reason I call them dynamic is because I invented some pretty, I, I have a PhD in mathematics, so I'm allowed to do this, but um, I invented some pretty sophisticated mathematics to keep these lines from crossing back and forth and whipsaw like most moving averages do. So what it does, one of the things it does, it also uses calculus and matrix algebra and uh, it's not whipsaw. And it recalculates every with every single tick of the market. So the length, you don't have to put in a link for the moving averages, like with most moving averages. These will uh, adjust with every bar so that they're never the same length. I mean, you know, if you put in like uh, 9 and 18, which a lot of them are set up for that as a default, uh, in mine... That won't stay 9 and 18 for very long. It'd go 8 and 17, 9 and 20, back and forth, changing its inputs dynamically with every heartbeat. NFBK. Okay, we've got an attractor. At that level, look how well that hit right there. Here's the yellow dot. Look where we are right now. And not only look where we are, but look what happened when it got where we are. So it went up to this attractor, tried to go above it, did a little exploring, came back down, down, and is now down. And I think it has closed below the DMA. So... The, the histogram is about to turn. So you see how the, these lines are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. As they get down to the zero line, they'll cross over and this trade will pull down to the lower outer band. So I'm thinking 1165 versus the current 1227. Thank you for that. We have anything else? I might be just down here real early, David. That's all the analyzing you want me to do. And I have to say thank you very much. I really appreciate your being here this morning. Uh, the person, two people who sent me their names and emails, I'll put you on the sunny side of the street list. How long to learn your program? Uh, if you get a free trial of my program, seven days for free, then I spend two Zoom sessions with you, installing it, white glove installation, and uh, showing you exactly how I use it. And then the second Zoom is during the live markets, so I can uh, watch what's going on in the live, live markets with you. I don't really want you to trade unless you're in sim mode, but that's what I that's what I do. Two Zoom calls. And a seven day free trial, trade station or ninja trader or multi charts. Okay, I've got you too. Yes, thank you. I use trades, I've been using trade station for 37 years. Uh, I've used almost everything else that's out there just because I like to be familiar with everything. Um, but I don't have my indicators working for the other things. I, speak uh, easy language fluently. So, uh, and in fact, I just 
finished writing two books with my friend Sam Tennis. Let me put the name up in here. The Definitive Guide to Trade Stations, Easy Language. It's a long title and OOEL programming. <sighs> it's 1300 pages in two volumes. So it's definitely the definitive guide. But Trade Station, like I said, I've been using it for 37 years and I use it on purpose because really it, it may not be as... Uh, Fancy as some of the new things like Trading View or even Ninja, but it's very easy, easy to use. And I speak easy language fluently. I've been doing it from the day I got TradeStation. And uh, I think it's the best there is. And I'm after them all the time to update the program. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to give you my cell phone number. I'm on California time. I only work 12 hours a day, every day. All righty. Then I thank you very much. You don't be afraid to give me a call. Any questions, any suggestions, I would appreciate it. Uh, you'll have to give, I'd be happy to add you to my list, but I need your name and email address. Anybody that wants it. Email and first and last name. Thank you, everybody. What does LW mean? Is that a stock you want me to look at? Or is that, are those your initials? Oh, stock. Okay. LW. I also do, uh, on the fourth of every month, I do um, happy half hour. So we get traders from all over the globe to sit in and share stories and tell, introduce themselves so that we can get to know each other and have some buddies because otherwise it's a fairly lonely business to be trading all day. Okay, LW, we've got a straight trend up. Just, I mean, it did a big correction right here in the middle and then it did a big up move. Let's see if we've got any attractors. Here's a yellow dot. There's a yellow dot. The attractors right at the 200 moving average. So it's gone up above the DMA. DMA is still gold on top. I'm still bullish. I think we could easily, let's see where the next attractor above is. There's one up there at 115. And then there's this one, the long spread between them. So I think it's going to continue to work its way up. All that I have is for any time frame, any symbol. So. There's the ES, and I showed you that on a five-minute chart. So here it is on a daily chart. You can see the ES, and you can take it down to any any minutes you want. I trade five minutes. So that's it. And come on, reload. So that's what it is. See, you, you can't tell the difference between a five and a daily with respect to sunny bands. Anything that's got liquidity works great. All the indicators work on any symbol and any time frame. I have per people using them on range bars as well. So, and I have people that uh, clients that trade options using Sunny Bands. This one guy trades Friday options. He looks at the configuration of the purple and gold and does puts or calls depending on that. You have to add me to the list, please. I can't do it if you don't send me your email address. Here we got one. Let me paste these in here. Okay. Add me to the list, please. 
CD mail. If you could give me uh, your first and last names and your email address, because my let my sunny side of the street it goes out in an email every Sunday night. So I have to have your email in order to send it to you. What is the symbol for palladium? I don't know the symbol. What's my email? It's Sunny, S U N N Y, at moneymentor.com. Okay. All right. Why is this up? Okay. Then I'll just get back to my trading. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, don't hesitate to call me if you want to something, have a question, just want to visit, it would be very nice. Thank you, Casey. Give me a call sometime. All right, everybody. David, it's a short recording. What we are talking about, Guide to Use Trade Station. Yes. Uh, the title's up above. If you scroll up, hmm, I don't know. Here, it's at the 12.30 p.m. level. I'll type it in again. This is about trade stations, easy language, and their option or uh, object-oriented easy language. And there's the title again. It's also printed in full color. I think that's easier to read. It gives me less royalties that way, but... Uh, I thought it was important for the readers to be able to see things in color. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you, Anka. All right. Uh, thanks, Sonny. All righty. Thank you. Bye-bye.